So welcome back. So let's have a let's try now. We made our context, so now we have an access point to actually generate our first database. All we need to do now is add our manager to actually start using the database. And we have to do a few things in the manager, so I'll split that into a few videos. But the first thing we need to do, of course, is to make our person, um, our person status manager available like this. So here we have a person status manager now. That's going to be an internal class like this, just to let you guys know it's an internal. The default is also internal, but now we know it's an internal. And of course, it's going to be an eye manager of some kind. That's going to be a person status eye manager here. So that means that we have to, to call ourselves using the contract, the eye manager contract or for interface. We have to actually implement all these different functions. And now we have to figure out how to actually use these functions when they are implemented. So let's just try and implement them all. I'll say finish. Here we go. They're all available. And we'll just start out by adding one by one these different functions. And as we move down, I'll just take a small break uh, halfway through. So let's start out. How do we actually use the context to tell our application that we want to access the database and do something, pull data, save data, whatever we want to do inside our database? Luckily, they made it very simple using one of the keywords called using. This keyword you define, I'll, I'll explain what it does in a second, but you'll define a variable of some kind and that variable is just going to be um, our context or our person app context. That's the one we need to define here to get going with using this access point to our database. So I'll make a person app context here and I'll add the curly brackets in the end. Now the using keyword is pretty awesome in this case. It means that we are going to access the database from here this curly bracket right here and until the curly bracket ends. In that area, the, uh, there's going to be a connection to the database. And when, that, when we get down here, the connection is going to be shut down. That's pretty awesome. So we don't have to sh say dispose connection, open connection, close connection. Inside the using statement, it'll just use it until it's done and then it'll shut it down automatically. So how do we actually create something in the database? Well, it's very simple. All I have to do is say db dot person statuses, because that's where I want to add this new status that I got right here. And I just say add and I add the status just like you would do in a list, right? So my point is just that a person status DB set is, it's not a list. It definitely isn't. That's very important to understand. It's not a list, but it has the same capabilities as a list, right? So we can add stuff to it. Now to actually save this inside the database, I have to call the save changes as the final thing here. And when I'm done, I'll just return the, the item I just created. So the difference between here and when we've actually saved the changes is that now this guy will actually contain the real ID. So not only will it store it in the database, but it will actually also provide it with the right ID inside the database. We'll get into more on how it can do that and why that works.